Nuss. Hi everybody. Hello Facebook. Hello YouTube. How are you all? I was just saying to uh, our friends over on Instagram, it's going to be a really, really interesting live today. I hope that you are sitting comfortably, maybe got a nice cup of tea. You might want to grab a pen and paper because there are going to be notes, I'm sure, that we're going to need to jot down because I'm going to be joined by Dr. Clara Russell, who founded a really interesting brand called Noggin. Noggin, as in your noggin. And we're going to talk about new tropics for brain health. And it's just going to be fascinating. I know there's been so much in the news, hasn't there, recently about dementia and Alzheimer's and all sorts of other disorders, degenerative disorders. So I can't wait to talk to her. Thank you. Lots of lovely comments coming in here on Instagram. You've received your magazine. Fantastic. I'm so pleased you love it. That's Trisha saying your beautiful magazine has arrived. I love it. So this is, this is the new cover. That's the one to watch out for. And it says on it, follow your joy. Follow your joy. That's what we should be doing, isn't it? Getting more joyful, more joyful than ever. Yeah, if you want to subscribe, um, just head over to lizardwellbeing.com. There's some great subscription offers. You love my top. Thank you very much. It's a new one from me and M. Great British brand, really love it. Fab female founder, Walkie Bird magazine is amazing. Judy Photography, you've got yours, fantastic. So did Kathy, <laughs> that's all really good. And my hair's looking great, thank you. I popped that on my stories last week, went to see Michael Van Clark. So I did an Instagram Live with him a while ago and hadn't actually met him in real life. So as soon as I could, I was back in London, I went up to his salon and fantastic and lovely products too, really nice. I hope that we're going to be able to do some more things with him in the future. But now let us get going with talking about the brain. I'm gonna need my brain switched on for this one because it's going to be an absolutely fascinating chat, I know. Oh, let's see. Why does it say paused? Let's go. Request to join, hello. Hi, Liz, hi. Let me turn you right up. That's good. Hopefully can, can you hear me okay? I can hear you really well, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Where are you speaking to I me from? Say. I detect an accent. Oh, I'm speaking from Edinburgh. Are you? Edinburgh, Edinburgh, so yes, yeah. I'm from in, Edinburgh and live in Edinburgh. So. And in fact, I think that's how we first connected because my son was up at uni and I think I was making some comment about brain health and brain focus for students and you left a comment yes. telling me all about noggin. So do you want to tell I us did. a little bit about your background? So you are a GP or you were a GP? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Um, yes, I my background is uh, being, I've been a doctor for uh, 20 years um, and most of that in general practice. Um, you don't look old enough, I have to say. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that's my background it is in that and really sort of my journey into brain health and learning more about brains and why they're important, I guess, began with, has begun with all my patients over the years, um, yeah. but then particularly with uh, with myself um, and my own health when that started to change yeah. um, a few years ago when I had my son um, and I was actually diagnosed with multiple sclerosis um, and that just kind of changed things for me quite dramatically Gosh. but it did lead me into this world of brain health in a way that I hadn't probably foreseen. How fascinating. So what is the connection with MS and the brain? For those who don't know, can you sort of describe the condition and how it impacts you? Yeah, so um, so multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune condition. So one of these conditions, which are unfortunately um, increasingly common now, mm. where um, our own bodies are, are attacking ourselves and yeah. for multiple sclerosis is to do with the nervous system. So basically our immune system um, is attacking our nervous system and that can affect uh, our brain and uh, spinal cord and right. can have a huge variety of um, sort of symptoms and it can affect people in lots of different ways. So was yours do you think brought on by pregnancy? You said it happens to around the time that you had your son. Um, interesting. Um, so yeah I developed symptoms really when my son was just a few months old mm. and um, the diagnosis was made when um, he was nearly a year 
Um, so what's interesting is that actually pregnancy is protective for something like multiple sclerosis in that all your resources are there to you know grow grow your baby and yeah. uh, go through that, that that stage of life so you're actually protecting everything's protected at that point um but Gosh. once you have uh, your your baby then actually your immune system is is uh really triggered basically and that's kind of what happened to me but i had had some symptoms kind of sporadically in the past but you know i didn't know what it was then no and back, you, you can know, tell with hindsight times but of course yes we can all see things we should have noticed or done but, oh my goodness um, i i look back in my 40s at, at you know what i now know is perimenopause I used well, to get yes. excruciating headaches and, you know, mm. feel really stressed. But it was at a time when Kim and I were selling the beauty company and, mm. you know, life was busy. I had young children. There was a lot of stress at work, you know, all of that stuff going on. And you just sort of put it down to other things, don't you? I think often, particularly Absolutely. midlife women tend to overlook some of the symptoms because we just think well that's life isn't it you know uh, you know we're meant to be a bit tired we're meant to have headaches we're meant to you know have all these sort of little niggly things without realizing that actually there could be something a bit more going on that we could help if we if we knew about it <laughs> Absolutely. And I think that's, you know, that's really been my experience in practice as well. But, you know, there's, you know, there's a huge spectrum of how people feel and the different symptoms, yeah. how, you know, that people experience. And, you know, by the time someone goes to the doctor with something, usually it's they're either, you know, extremely worried or it's yeah. been causing them quite a lot of upset. But actually, once we kind of exclude certain things, then that's often very reassuring. But then often people are left with a kind of in between place of, well, I feel relieved, but actually I still feel a bit rubbish. And yeah. now, what, now what do I do? And, I know that a lot yeah, of people, think... uh, women who have autoimmune issues, do find that they abate during pregnancy. Mm. Presumably the hormones, and we know that oestrogen has a, a key role with the immune system. You know, would there be a case then for loading the body with all the oestrogen and all the hormones that you have during pregnancy to, to dampen down autoimmune issues? I mean, I think that's something we're going to see see more of. I mean, and, you know, currently kind of the, the treatment options are sort of disease modifying and they are targeting the immune system. But I think, you know, the, the more we learn about these things, I guess, the more we, like, we realise how little we know. Yeah. Um, so there there may well be hormonal, um, you know, ways to, to, to approach things going forward. Yeah. Um, and I think obviously this, you know, the conversation around menopause and perimenopause particularly, mm. you know, there's a huge amount of overlap with with um, a lot of those symptoms and symptoms that people experience with things like MS, but also a lot of these kind of chronic conditions where, you know, it does does affect the brain and it does affect yeah. our thinking and headaches and the things, the sort of things that you mentioned. Um, so I think, you know, it's, it's being open-minded to looking at all options, I think, and mm. Thankfully, we're, I think we're hopefully beginning to move a bit more in that direction. Oh, we definitely good. are. No, no, in, in, you know, information is, is coming out all the time, isn't it? And, you know, mm. I see it, uh, you know, I've, I've worked in the world of well-being for 35 years or so. Yes. You know, my yes. first book on nutrition was published 30 years ago this year. And there's just so much more information. You know, back then it was really sort of quite broad, quite general, a lot of it quite mm. wrong. <laughs> And now, yeah. you know, we're getting into nutrigenomics. We're really drilling down nootropics, which I want to talk to you about, is this Absolutely. sort of buzzword yeah. of, of the moment. What exactly is a nootropic? And it's N O, -O um, isn't it? New, nootropic, it, not new. It is. New. Yeah. Oh, I mean, what, what does that mean, a nootropic? <laughs> New tropic. I think um, I think um, you, you said it there, sort of buzzword in terms of it's one of those words that um, sounds sounds complicated or might have, can have lots of meanings, but actually it really <laughs> just means um, it's uh, you know contains ingredients that can be beneficial for the brain. Right. Um, and I think it's it's you kind know, of evolved um, you know in, in different iterations over the years from sort of prescription medications but now I think we think of nootropics again because we've learned more and we're more open-minded yeah. and the research is there that actually sure um, so things you know, like there's, ashwagandha there's... you know things like saffron you know things that we know impact mood and neurotransmitters absolutely. in the brain they would all yeah. qualify as nootropics they would, would they? yes absolutely yes yeah I think some you know you'd even say that even caffeine could be classed as a nootropic a nootropic I impact. definitely find it really <laughs> beneficial for my brain <laughs> My brain doesn't really work until I've had that first cup of coffee. Yes, I can relate to that. Yes, absolutely. Yes. 
nothing happens until that happens. So yes. So um, your your yeah. son, how old is your son now? I'm just trying to get a sense of when all this happened. So he's eight. Yeah. Eight. Okay. Um, and and so. when did noggin happen? Because I have to say. Um, you, you might not like this, but, you know, a lot of GPs are sort of notorious for not knowing a great deal about nutrition and it not yes. being a core part of the GP curriculum, as it were, in, in med school. So how did you kind of go about noggin and what was your kind of driving force? Was it really the MS? Did you take supplements and then think these are really helpful? I need to know more about it. Absolutely. There's a, well, there's a, a few different things that sort of coincided at the one time, as is often the case. Um, so yeah, clearly my sort of diagnosis was a real, real starting point, um, and that really led me into looking into, you know, beyond. I had was fortunate to be offered prescription options, but um, what I found quite quickly was I knew I was taking prescription medication for the longer term benefit, but actually on a day to day basis, they weren't really doing it. I wasn't feeling any better. And in fact, with a young toddler, I was just feeling pretty yeah, rubbish. And I'm sure. I was just, you know, desperate to sort of find ways that were going to sort of benefit um, me yeah. on an everyday basis. Um, and that really took me into sort of studying and um, kind of functional medicine and kind of um, lifestyle medicine. Um, mm. And that really took me on a very fascinating journey of all these things yeah. that, like you say, that I had certainly not been part of my traditional learning. Yeah. Um, Amazing. That's so just, many more doctors that are getting into what, you know, what they're calling functional yeah. medicine, which is just has to be the future, doesn't it? Don't you think? I, absolutely. I mean, I, I, you know, I can, I remember going um, to, to the, to the sort of first kind of core, part of the course that I went to and really just coming away, I was sitting with another GP who I hadn't met before. And um, we, we sat there and we both kind of met, you know, started to talk in the coffee break. And it was just like a sort of real light bulb moment of, wow. oh my gosh, like there's all these things that... Oh, fantastic. How, how did I not know any of this stuff? And I, I know. think, you know, you, you mentioned... It's terrifying, sort of, I think, isn't it? It is. And yeah. you mentioned about sort of things evolving and, and I think specifically around gut health and the microbiome. Yeah. And that was the first I'd ever heard of that. And that was, you know, a few years ago, well, I think, a few years back, a few years ago now, yeah. um, and you know now we're having these conversations around yeah. gut health that are brilliant. And I know that's an area you're really passionate about. Yeah, this. no, so, definitely. Um, yeah, no, I wrote the Good Gut Guide. Gosh, mm. I wrote that before I wrote the menopause book. So, right. gosh, we must yeah. be going back uh, kind of eight years or so. I know it was one of the first kind of consumer guides. It's yeah. um, it's amazing. Uh, there's a, a nurse actually who is has just said, you know, where can I find out more about doing these courses? Are they available for nurses? What would you yeah, suggest for, for people wanting to train in functional medicine? Um, well, there is the Institute of Lifestyle Med uh, sorry, Institute of Functional Medicine, um, okay. which um, is US based, but they do do UK based training courses. And um, absolutely, okay. when I went, okay. um, there was. There were a few doctors, but it was mo it was I would say it was mostly nurses and sort of other health practitioners. Right. Um, a so lot yes. of it does seem to be coming from the states. I know when I've talked about nootropics in the past, I was mm -hmm. talking to an amazing nutritional psychiatrist who works at Harvard, right. and a lot yes. of that cutting edge stuff, you know, does seem to come from from Absolutely. the American universities first, perhaps. Yeah, well, that nutritional psychiatry. I mean, that's a fascinating area that. Yeah. That I'm sure. I mean, you must be plugged now, right so. into that. Yeah, I mean, just the idea that you know that you know what we eat, you know, yeah. can make such a could be used as a treatment option for um, you know specific mental health diagnoses, depression, totally. and even sort of more severe conditions is just amazing, really. So I think again, we're in a fortunate position that we're seeing a lot of that research coming forward now. Yeah, and the, you know, the whole brain chemistry. I'm I'm a big fan of nutrigenomics and having you know your DNA, your genetic variances yes. tested. And, mm. you know, we've got various genetic issues, if you like, for want of a better word, that run through my family. And right, in okay. trying to help them, you know, we've really explored that. And it's just so fascinating how these genetic variances are significantly helped by certain vitamins and, yes. and herbs. Yeah. And, you know, things yeah. like St. John's wort, things like quercetin, zinc, the B vitamins, B6 in particular, B12... You know, th these are, are proven biochemically to impact things like serotonin, dopamine, GABA. You know, it's, it's astonishing, really. isn't it? And yeah. how, you know, how crazy that psychiatrists 
don't know about this and I know that because I was talking to a leading one in London not you know not that long ago uh, specializing in child psychiatry and I was saying yes but what about the impact of these you know these nutrients and you know just like blank you know it was just sort of oh no but we can give you this medication we can give you this drug and it was like no no but what about something that can work with your functionality I guess that's why it's called functional medicine isn't it because it's working with the way you function and again, it isn't an either or, you know, an either sure. or situation. You know, it's, you can it's something faith. you can look at different. You know, absolutely, yeah. the prescription option is yeah. incredibly important, and you know, of absolutely. course, there's lots of evidence and it helps a lot of people. But yeah. that doesn't mean that there isn't a route to look at other other things as well. Yeah. And I think you know that's something that again, it probably took me a little bit of time to get my head around that actually, you know, I didn't have to pick one lane or another. I could, I could do you both. You could merge still, the two. Um, you know do the sort of conventional route but also look at other ways to try it's the best way isn't it absolutely and yeah looking at noggins so is it the three that you have the three complexes I love, moment, yes. so, I, I love the name. I mean, I love noggin for start. I mean, it's just use your noggin. It's just great, isn't it? Great, yes. um, Thank you. So noggin oomph, which I guess does what it says on the tin. Well, that's the, that's the, that's the intention. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Give it, um, giving you a bit of oomph. Then we've got yes. um, noggin pause. Pause. Which is yep. just uh, the relaxing. Uh, I mean, I, you, I can just see looking at the key ingredients in that magnesium, obviously key. Hops, so important. again, very calming, and yes. ashwagandha, which we talked about. Fabulous. Yes, absolutely. And then this um, one, which perhaps we could focus on, which is FOGO. What does FOGO mean and what does it stand for? So it's FOGO. FOGO, sorry. FOGO, sorry. <laughs> FOGO. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so yeah, FOGO um, really came from, well, brain fog, um, brain unfortunately, fog. or fortunately. Um, and that was something I did experience uh, and still do at times, um, yeah. really quite early on in my sort of diagnosis and what happened afterwards. And even then, again, that's a few years ago and brain fog wasn't something that really I'd ever heard of or yeah. talked about. Um, so when I started looking into that um, and saw the sort of hormonal links between yeah. um, uh, brain fog and uh, you know and perimenopause, um, mm. again thinking about options, I wanted to create something that was going to tackle. Oh, that I wish I'd had that. I wish I'd but, had that in my forties. <laughs> <laughs> and I am fascinated yeah. that you are using evening primrose oil as part mm. of this with the GLA. I kind of started my journey into wellness with evening primrose oil because it was a very enlightened naturopath who encouraged me to take it for my eczema and I saw immediate Mm -hmm. improvements in my skin and that's when I started researching it and that's kind of what led me into writing vital oils and you know kind of the rest is history so why have you used it for for brain fog why why have you included evening primrose oil so we think well again all the ingredients are there in a sort of in a kind of synergistic format to try mm-hmm. and all support each other um, and we've used included the evening primrose oil to help with the omega balance and um, that we know is so important for hormone yeah. balance throughout that perimenopause and uh, yeah. menopause phase um you know i think again omega threes and omega sixes is such a, an interesting area for, it? for brain health but it, you're um, right it's the balance you've got to be really careful in getting that balance yes. right because if you have too much of the sixes yes and not good. enough of the threes and the dha in particular you know you, you're yeah. going to come unstuck aren't you and the gla i mean i've, I've really loved the fact that you've got you know your gla in here so many good okay. things Vitamin B, obviously your B vitamins are key for brain. So are we particularly looking at things like B6 and B12? Yeah, I mean, again, when I, you know, began on this, uh, again, uh, just sort of learning about how important the B vitamins were for in terms of energy production um, and how, you know, basically, uh, you, you know, they're basically ensuring that you have enough vitamin B within your diet, but also in an yeah. absorbable form in supplements. And that was something that, again, yeah. I hadn't realised that um, it's one thing taking something, but we want it to be active and yes. easily absorbable and and doing something so b6 b12 b9 incredibly important um and then in fogo we've obviously included um b5 as well for and to try and help with the skin health as well so 
Fantastic. I should say, actually, um, before we get too carried away here, that if anybody is interested in going and having a look at your website, you have given us a very generous 10% off with our Liz Loves. So thank you very much for that. We really appreciate it. And your your website is noggin.brain, noggin.brain.co.uk. And I, we, we checked it. The 10% does seem to work on your subscriptions as well as single Brilliant. items. Great. So, you know, which takes the discount yeah. up to 20%. So, you know, you might want to, you know, just, just try it and then, you know, see how you get on. That's and then great. I'm sure it'll be something that you'll want to take regularly. So thank you for sharing the discount there. Interesting that you talk about the kind of bioavailability of the B vitamins, because mm. I've heard that a lot of the, the B vitamins you need, and I've seen that you've got them here in the B12, you need the methyl form. Yes. Yeah. Or methyl, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Why is that important with B vitamins? So to absorb and use B vitamins, we want it to be in the methylated form. And um, the reason for that is many of us carry some sort of, as you mentioned already, genetic um, coding so that we don't, mm. we, we find it hard to absorb B vitamins. Yeah. And particularly many of the supplement form um, that you can buy, um, we have to, our bodies basically just have to work harder to absorb it. Yeah, if it's yeah not you really methylated. want the methyl form. Do look at it. If, you, if you're taking a B vitamin supplement, do check the label yeah, to make sure it's definitely. the methyl or methyl form. They're a bit more expensive, yeah. aren't they, as, as ingredients, which is why a lot of brands yeah. don't use them. But, you know, you, Absolutely, you kind yeah. of get what you pay for. You, you, you know, you need something. If you're going to bother to take a supplement, you may as well take one that's going to work, frankly. Is my, that's for my sure. view, anyway. Exactly. <laughs> Otherwise, sure. don't bother. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I, again, and there's so you know, there's so much out there. There, it's, it's a really confusing area. Yeah. Um, and I think you know, it's it's something that can be quite you know daunting for people, understandably, when you first go in and look at all those different options. And but yes, methylated is incredibly important if you wanted to actually uh, do what you're taking it for. So that's yeah. something. We Being asked here if, if if you can take alongside other supplements, you know, if people are using like a high strength vitamin D, which is something that I've definitely you know advocated or a specific omega-3 or something like that I mean is it something that we could just add in as a general all round specifically for the brain if we wanted to kind of target our noggin absolutely I think um yes I mean it's always worth just checking um in of terms course. of what, this, what specifically you are taking um but the, the products we've created are designed to either stand alone or if you're on specific um treatments for something else such as if you're taking vitamin d already yeah. um yes absolutely you can take that as well yeah and what about things like thyroxine other vitamins um medication any interactions taking hrt anything like that um it's the taking hrt no i mean we, we decided for to be taken along with HRT, alongside hrt um, excellent if you're already <laughs> taking it um yeah we do have the red we do have the red clover in there the phytoestrogen so um yeah. it's just being aware that that is there is that ingredient there so sometimes yeah. just uh, you know keeping an eye on the estrogen levels might be yeah. important but for most people yeah, yeah. from our um nutritional expertise that we've worked with yeah. you know the advice is that there's really no concern take at all, it alongside so. and of course if anybody isn't taking hrt or maybe is perimenopausal thinking about it you know this would perhaps be yeah. a good sort of entry level and then for you know, people yeah. who are menopausal or postmenopausal, just sort of keeping that up because you've also got magnesium what form of magnesium have you got in here um, we've got the most absorbable form in there, so the um, great. Uh, gosh, yeah. So we've got we've got made sure we've got most absorbable yeah. forms of all the nutrients that we've got. Mm -hmm. And tell me what bacopa is. I've never heard of it. Have I said that right? Yeah. Bacopa. <laughs> uh, what bacopa is bacopa? bacopa. Um, so it's, actually, yeah. it's one of the plant-based um, ingredients. So it's quite well known in sort of Ayurvedic medicine. Um, nice. And has is we've included it really for the for the brain benefits, so cognition, thinking, memory. Um, it's one of these great plants that's you know been used in, for generations in yeah. uh, you know in in other communities to help with these um, these sort of everyday symptoms that we do develop. But it just you know over the last few years we've got increasing evidence that um, we can get improvement from cognition cognition from mm. thinking things like the copa um, okay. and we've got the ginseng in there as well yeah, I saw um, that. Another one. and the sage was the other one that we um that was, yeah uh, sage you know, i mean the, the studies on the brain and sage is really interesting isn't it what's what they're finding out now 
Yeah, absolutely. And again, the I think the again we really wanted to, particularly with Paws and Fogo, we wanted to take the a bit of both again, combine the, the sort of you know evidence based plants and the, the botanicals that are already they have mm-hmm. been existing for generations and helping people for um for years and years for with these sort of symptoms and combine them with um highly absorbable you know multivitamins and minerals that yeah. we also know are going to help look after our brains you know and help, help us feel better on the day-to-day basis but also help with you know reducing risk of some of these um, difficult diseases as we age um, yeah. and also sort of modify the, some of the disease processes by looking after yeah. um, our nutrient um, intake and our, our lifestyle overall. I think it's a lovely idea that you've got so much in here so people don't have to think oh my goodness you know how many pills am I taking <laughs> you know yes. w- what are they all doing you know it's it's quite good that you you know as a trusted GP medical practitioner somebody highly personally invested in this in getting something yes. that, that works for yourself um, yeah. can put it together because just looking at some of the botanicals and I know that um, my audience here will be familiar with some of these names like ashwagandha, maca mm. root, um, we've got sage ginkgo biloba which we know is very good for brain and memory, evening primrose oil, matcha green tea, you know I mean it's it's fantastic everything that you put in here I mean it's really an amazing formula amazing complex Great. so do, do you take you take this every day do you do you find that you get relief or support for your ms with this i would say um i've actually well i've, I've previously been taking the oomph because fog was just quite new over the last few weeks um so oh, um, well but the, the the main benefit i've been getting really is from the energy levels i would say yeah. um I think you know. Again, we all we all know the things we should be doing to help our seals, ourselves feel better. And I think having energy to actually do those things can be two different things. So mm. I really find that taking oomph gives me that sort of sustained energy. That's this one. Oomph. Great to have the coffee. Great to have the coffee in the morning, but you know you do yeah, find yeah. that sort of. And this has got afterwards, so. more of the ginseng in it and the B12. Would you yes. take, would it be kind of either or, or how would you use these throughout the day? I mean, for example, pause, is that something that you might want to take at bedtime or does it not yeah, work so, like that? Um, so definitely, I guess, um, pause, yeah, pause would be an evening. You can take it any time during the day, but certainly I've been taking, I take pause in the early evening. Okay. Um, I find that it's helpful in terms of just sort of calming, um, but not sedating and um, so it's not something that's going to knock you out or just um, seems to improve sleep quality that's what I find with magnesium yes. I just yes. seem to get a better night's sleep and actually I proved it on my sleep tracking app oh, um, they're amazing. Yes. yeah yes. you can just see you have all those lovely REM up and down yes. deep sleep movements that you're supposed to have and this Absolutely. is this has got lovely yes. things in it so your paws has got magnesium lemon balm um, then mm-hmm. we've got hops extract and lion's mane mushroom. So again, that's a well-known nootropic. Ashwagandha yes. and rhodiola, which again is very calming. So lovely complex for for helping guarantee a good night's sleep or a better oh, yeah. night's and, sleep. Anyway, and and I think just that sort of feeling of you know calm and being able to relax. I think sleep yeah. is sleep is so important. But I think if we can you know sort of teach ourselves oh to sleep goodness. better that's that's a really important thing to be to be able to do we've got so many distractions and so much yeah. going on in our minds that trying to have that wind down time and trying to help mm. ourselves you know fall asleep you know have better quality rest is so important so yeah, yeah i find the, the pause definitely helpful for that um and yeah oomph has really helped with um, energy and sustained energy and sort of focus a little bit as well i think mm-hmm. it's been you know it's been a busy time trying you know doing all these different things and yeah. um, learning how to um operate instagram lives and things like that so <laughs> uh, i do find that the uh, um uh, the, definitely taking oomph has helped a bit with its sort of concentration and um feeling like i can sort of tackle the things i want to do yeah so well the oomph i mean you've got ginseng in here you've also got glutathione which is one of my favorites um, I need to take glutathione because I've discovered in a, a nutrigenomic test that I don't convert oh, it. Oh, interesting. Right, okay. So, and, and I feel I have got so much more oomph uh, now that yeah. I take glutathione. And then you've got yeah. zinc and your B vitamins and your vitamin C and, you know, all those other things in there. So what was missing from here, here then from the oomph that you felt that with Fogo, you know, that you needed to really specifically drill into brain fog and 
things like anxiety would that be helped with the fogo yeah i think with the reason we went um sort of the formulation for fogo and um, it's different to oomph is really looking at the, the causes of drugs yeah. the driver for the brain fog or and the fatigue and um uh, you know as obviously menop- perimenopause takes hold that yeah. cause unfortunately is more hormonal so we wanted to just shift the shift the focus a little bit um mm. from you know brain supporting nutrients but also ingredients that were sort of targeting some of those hormonal changes um, interesting so you mentioned like that because i've just clover. seen a, a question here on instagram um saying is this suitable then for a person in their 20s who suffers mm-hmm. with brain fog during periods absolutely yes yeah you can so you've got um, that hormonal change going on even much younger yes yeah definitely you could definitely mm. uh, because as i say the ingredients are there to try and help with that and the oomph and fogo could be taken together but i guess mm. it would just be trying to un- underpin what it, you know what, trying to identify the, the reason for what you were needing it for okay great so there wouldn't be any issue with, with, with taking the two together if you really wanted to get a bit more oomph <laughs> If you, if you really wanted to, I think it's just, um, again, yeah. just checking the ingredients with the B6 um, that we've got quite high do- optimal doses in the um, formula. So um, probably if you're going to take them both, it would just be one capsule of each rather than two. And rather two. than two. Um, Interesting. Yeah. And for younger people, Lorraine's asking about somebody yeah. age 14. Yes, yes. Yeah. So oomph and pause are suitable for uh, tw- twelve plus, actually. Great. Um, so again, twelve to fourteen would just be one capsule a day, but fourteen yeah. plus, you can take the two capsules um, two. if needed. And actually, for pause, um, we've had some great feedback around sort of like exam uh, stresses and Anxiety uh, for that exams. kind of difficult time. Oh my goodness. Yes. Um, from sort great of great uh, timing 14, for those 15 who are year old girls. Yeah. yeah, involved in exams at the moment and you know it's just you know it's I mean supposing you've you've got really bad PMS and I know young girls in particularly you know can Mm. get really bad period pain and symptoms hormonal symptoms and if that's during exam week I mean you're really disadvantaged aren't you I mean you should almost be able to get you know extra dispensations if you know if you've got your period or you're suffering from PMS at that age so so for, for, for girls like that the pause would be good yes. to take you know for, for a few months perhaps during exams and revision exam time. And... yes yeah absolutely and we've as i say we've had some great and um, sort of uh, customer feedback on that that it's been really helpful over sort of i think it was mock time back at the beginning of january february yeah. um that was a yes it's a we get some good information that people were getting the benefits from that in that time so yeah, yeah. and I, I i take actually quite a high dose of magnesium at night so I could still right. take that, could I, and then still have the pause as well? Yes, yes, you could. Yeah, I think, Great. again, particularly with the botanicals, you know, there's and some of the minerals, you know, when it, we know now as well around optimal dosing that actually um, we, we, we can take. Things like magnesium is very safe, isn't it? Yeah, yeah you, you exactly. Can. And even the B vitamins, they're all it's water, they're water soluble. Water soluble, so of course. Actually store that much you don't vitamins, store it so it's like vitamin c you know if you take loads of it you just sort of weigh yes. it away so it's yeah <laughs> it's not like the yeah. fat soluble ones that you do store um, yes, and you exactly. can have a problem with yeah. if it's you know if there is you know but you'd have to have a very very high dose for, for that to be yes indeed a, yeah an issue and I, and I think they can again it just gives us the energy to do some of those other things as well yeah. you know we know that exercise and you know the power of um you know having purpose in our day-to-day routines is so mm-hmm. important for our brain health and um you know being able to have the energy to to take on to do those things yeah. you know we want to do all we can to help ourselves with that so yeah absolutely um, no i think if you can really right. get your nutrition right using some of these nootropics especially as we age because we know that we yes. lose our ability to process certain nutrients yeah. as we age and that's why you know we may need Um, to supplement you know I'm increasingly coming to the opinion that there are certain things that we do definitely need to supplement with you know because they're just not found in the diet in the quantities that we need them as we age if we're going to age well and increase longevity and stay strong and fit and active you know these days you know if you're if you're in your 60s you're not putting your feet up are you with your your slippers and knitting you, yes. you, you know, you're working and you're out there and you're doing stuff and you're socialising and you're having your hobbies and you're 
being active and you may be lifting weights and you know running half marathons you know all of that yes in, which starting is, businesses anything can happen yeah. when you're, you know at any age now and I think again we want to sort of resource ourselves the best way we can for for aging and for the inevitable transitions that come along with difficult times in life and the natural age processes that we you know that, that we will all go through and absolutely I think nutrition is such an important part of that and you know, my interest in it really came, as I said, from my own experience, but that we've been fortunate to work with nutritionists to help formulate the products yeah. um, in a way that are, you know, are going to, you know, really tackle the symptoms that we want to, we want to help people with. And mm. as part of that, that's caring for their brain in the longer term. We know that a lot of these nutrients are really important to yeah. maintain in taking periods when you need them, but also um, as, as we age. Um, so it's, it's just so, it's, such such an important area to be talking about it, it really really is and I think you know what's so nice talking to you is you've got this personal story you know with your own MS with your own family mm -hmm. everything that's going on there um what about other sort of brain health issues things like spectrum disorders ADD ADHD how would that kind of work either you know for youngsters or even for adults with you know adult ADHD I think it's fascinating again that we're talking so much around ADHD and particularly for, even for adults now. Um, I think you know just being really aware of your of the symptoms you're experiencing is, is critical and mm -hmm. just being able to listen to yourself and really know you know what, what's normal for you and you know how it's affecting you and being able to take that forward to to a, pro a health professional that can help steer you in the right direction of yeah. whether it's diagnoses or um, and or ways of managing how you feel. I mean, again, I think sleep is so important and yeah. we're in this just epidemic now, aren't we, of difficulty sleeping yeah. and, you know, disrupted sleep patterns and I think... So again, anybody pretty much at any age with a disrupted sleep or wanting to sleep better could be using the paws, could they? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And again, it's um, designed to be non sedating. So it's, it sounds weird that it will help you sleep better, but it's not going to put you to sleep. But um, it's, you know, it's, it's, quality it's of the sleep. effect of all the it is. And it's a bit, yeah. and it's that whole sort of winding down before bed. You know, I think so many of us, you know, you're running around all day and then go to bed and just wonder why you can't sleep. And again, we need to have that. I know, all these things kind of in our, in our heads. Downtime. I was actually yeah, given a really yeah. good piece of advice recently, and that is to have a notepad beside the bed. Yes, um, before yeah. you go to sleep, just write down all the things that you're turning over in your mind. Because yes. if you commit it to paper, then the brain kind of parks it and says, okay, I've dealt with that. I don't need to think about it while I sleep. I don't need to process it because I know I can pick yeah. it up again in the morning when I read the piece of paper. Um, because Absolutely. otherwise you do tend to, you know, I often wake up, not often, but occasionally I will wake up if something's on my mind, <clears throat> you know, in the small hours. And that will be the thing that's yep. is first in my mind. I'm thinking, how am I going to resolve this? You know, what do I need to do? Definitely. Well, that stress hormone, you know, cortisol starts to, to, you know, go up around that three, four o'clock in the morning time. Does it? it? Oh, that, is that why we wake up at three or four? Yeah, that's the sort of when that, oh. that hormone starts to increase. And so if there's often, if you're going to bed a bit stressed or feeling um, worked yeah. up about something and or maybe you've had a glass of wine or there's something else you've maybe done something or been watching, uh, you know, had some blue light stimulation late into bed, then it's quite common for that time to be the time that you wake up because that stress hormone starts to starts to rise yes. oh my goodness do we really want to help quell the cortisol yes. what are Absolutely. the best ways then to to dampen down those cortisol spikes um i think really focusing on your pre-bed routine um and again trying to think about how you do wind down before you go to bed um i think we are you know trying to trying to avoid the screens before a couple of hours before bed yeah. trying to have some downtime where you're not being stimulated by something right. too good on netflix or um you know conversations stressful conversations yeah um, we tend to do, i mean if you're like me i'm kind of running around doing a few late emails you know maybe yeah. you know watching yeah. something quite stimulating or whatever or you know maybe possibly even having an awkward conversation that extra yeah. glass of wine and then it's like crap I'm going to flop into bed crash yes absolutely. so you're saying yeah. actually you need to separate that time so you need to have an hour or two when you're it's, just it's turning, not easy switching like, your brain off. it's not easy yeah no. it's, like you say that's the time that we're and again with 
partners or family or whatever. That's yeah, and if you're busy, you that's together, kind of when when stuff happens, isn't it? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but again, I think you know the key to a good night's sleep and sleeping all through the night actually really begins in in the morning when you get up and sort of having that routine of you know having your fresh air, having your exercise, yeah, definitely and trying thing. to do as much as you can, absolutely, and trying to do as much as you can before mm-hmm. you get to that early evening time when um, actually you really need to be beginning to try and wind down and switch your brain off as opposed yeah. to piling in all the to do things. But so going to the gym to after work or you know going for an evening run is necessarily not yeah. necessarily the best idea better to get it in earlier in the day i think if you can get it in earlier in the day or again if you're going to do it after work again it's just trying to make it as early as possible so yeah. trying to not do that big burst of exercise and um, you know like an hour before bed or whatever you know, you really want to try and to, you know give yourself at least a couple of hours before you go to bed where you're yeah. not doing anything to kind of stimulate yourself and sure. get those hormones all racing around you don't want the you know the, the benefits of the endorphins and the surge and no you want to use, when you're use that to during sleep, the day so. joanna's yeah, asking exactly. i don't know if this is a pointed question but she's asking if men can take oomph <laughs> i think there might be a story uh, yeah. behind that question <laughs> <laughs> yeah discuss um yes men can definitely take oomph yes yes okay um so they're designed for um, for everyone, really. So yeah. everyone with a brain. So, Anyone yeah. with a brain, I love it. Yeah. Now, uh, we have seen quite a lot of questions coming in. Can okay. people ask questions directly? Do you, what's, And if mm-hmm. so, what's the best way to, to reach you and, and the team at Noggin? Absolutely. So, yeah, um, we love questions. Um, and Good. we'll do our best to answer them. <laughs> um, so, yeah, either DMing us on Instagram um, or through the website is, is the other way. But, yeah. Okay, absolutely. there's a question button is there yeah, that you can... you can contact us there yeah and we will uh, i will do my best to answer whatever i can or signpost in a different direction if i'm not yes. sure i've got the right answer for you so fantastic absolutely fantastic honestly it's it's such a pleasure to talk to you there's always something new in this area i think you know we always learn um and you know certainly you've mentioned things that i hadn't heard about before and also clarified the real benefit for so many of these new tropics that I'm going to continue to talk about, Clara, because I just think they're so fascinating. Um, And I'm just so pleased that you messaged me because I'd put some pictures of Kit up in Edinburgh. And that was our kind of connection. I love that. I love how Instagram kind of expands our family and our circle. Um, And, you you know, it's a fab... I think you mentioned something about him not having... Having anything green to eat, and I think I can't remember what that, but it was something that was not He's, a natural looking green. Exactly, was, he was like asking me so. if green haribo <laughs> count towards his green yeah. quota, to which, of course, the yeah. answer is no. I think I put a picture of him not looking terribly impressed with some green pea soup that I ordered yeah. for him in one of the cafes. <laughs> Yes, he's, I have yeah. to say he's a lot better he's a lot better now and he does feel better for it and he's at right. home at the moment so I, I do tend to make him shakes um, right. and yes. put you know green powders and all of that stuff in yeah. just oh. to know that you know if he goes out you know with his mates or whatever I you know obviously can't control what he's eating but mm. it's like having supplements you know if you can at least get that baseline of good stuff in them you know you, you know that yes. they're a bit protected against some of the other things we want to have have things in there that are only active and doing what they're supposed to do and none of none of the the sort of not so beneficial ingredients that sometimes pop up in supplements so it's really important to be choosing ones that have have got the good stuff in them definitely and super trusted i think you definitely qualify as a fab female founder so thank you thank Thank you you. very much for being with us today and everybody go check out nogginbrain.co.uk and don't forget you can dm Dr. Clara, or yes. um, email if there you've got Please specific do, yes. questions. We're, you know. we're delighted to answer anything. And fantastic that you've got that GP background, so I think people can be really safe that you're going to get Great. good evidence based information. So thank you. Absolutely. We'll do our best. Well, thank you for having me. It's really um, exciting to get the chance to talk about it. So uh, it's lovely to your, to your community of, of uh, followers. So thank really you. Really super. Thank you. Sending you a big heart, lots of hearts oh, on the screen you. to you. Thank now you. you've got to click off because if I click off, I tend to click everybody off, which okay. never works I'll do that. well. Thank you very much. Nice thank to you. see you. And good you. luck with Bye. everything. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Oh, isn't that lovely? What a lovely lady. And isn't it amazing that you can found an incredible brand like that 
but so beneficial to yourself out of your own personal adversity. You know, I think, you know, sometimes there is a silver lining and, and we can use that. I know, well, Lily found that with Cell Return, you know, her LED face masks and and more, you know, the hair helmet that makes your hair grow and all of that, you know, came about because of her chronic pain um, and migraines. And that's when she first started looking at LED light and then found that it transformed her skin. So then she, you know, started doing Cell Return. So, you know, that was one tiny glimmer of benefit um, obviously we would still rather she was well um, which she is not yet but we will hopefully get there a couple of things before I go a few other things uh, to do with the brain actually which you might be interested in because that was our kind of focus for today this I have to say if you haven't read this I really do recommend it um, it's called stay sharp stay sane um, and it's the essential guide to better brain health. Now, I printed this one out just to show you. It's absolutely jam-packed with really, really good information and links and recipes and all about, you know, nootropics, the brain anatomy. You know, if you are at all interested in cognitive function, disorders of the brain, Alzheimer's, dementia, aging well, you know, Parkinson's, so much, this talks in detail but in a very accessible way about all the different things that we can do and there's lots and lots of information in there um, and as well as some favorite supplements and links to podcasts and all of that and you can download that from the Lizard Wellbeing website it's a 4 99 download and once you've got it you've then got it on your tablet or your phone or your laptop or whatever or you can print it out um, but it is very well researched and well referenced and I do recommend it because we only have one brain, don't we? And we need to look after it. We need to function so well. And I think particularly as women, you know, as we saw in uh, the amazing Channel 4 documentary that Kate and Davina did, what was it, two weeks ago now? Uh, staggering the amount of uh, activity that goes on in the brain during perimenopause and the support that our brain needs during that time and beyond. So really worth, I think, investing in a little bit of time and uh, effort just to get to know the brain, get to know all these different things that the brain needs and make sure that we've got them uh, every day going forward because our brain needs them. A couple of other things that uh, if you're interested, just as a reminder, the Pure Omega-3, this is what I take. I love it, it's the Bare Biology. Um, again, another fab female founder. We've talked about this before. Really highly recommend it. I give it to my kids. And there is um, a 15% off. That's barebiology.com if you want to have fish oils particularly. Then we've got, also up in Scotland actually, not too far from where Clara was talking to us from, we have the pure seaweed, which is the iodine. Again, lots of information on iodine for brain. If you want to top up your iodine, that's also for metabolism and thyroid function, so it can help particularly with weight regulation and nervous system, brain health. And again, that is just Scottish iodine, Scottish seaweed, um, and that is 20% off with Dr. Seaweed. And I have a feeling that that also works on subscriptions, so it can be even more than 20%. Um, so, yeah, the, the download for your brain copy, you could try, you could try updating it. It depends, really, when you last, when you last downloaded it. Um, if you need any more information on that, do email my team. That's hq at lizardwellbeing.com. Um, so, oh, Jan, you're asking questions about low platelet counts. Oh, my goodness. Uh, you'd better email Dr. Clara, I think. I can't give you medical advice, and I certainly wouldn't want to. Um, so definitely email her with that question, and I'm sure she will get back to you on it. And the other thing I just saw... Oh, by the way, um, the other two things that I personally take for my brain. I take one in the morning and one at night. Can you remember what they are? I will give you a clue. I buy them both from Youth and Earth, and I use my discount every time. It's 20% at youthandearth.com. So I take this every morning. This is NMN. I've written about it in the magazine. 
So it's something that is, helps with energy, with cell health, with aging. We lose it as we age, so I top mine up. And that's what it looks like. Okay, it's a little bit of white powder. Um, and I take it when I travel. I'm off on my travels again tomorrow, going somewhere exciting. So um, I'll be coming live from a, a new location on Thursday. So I always take it in my packet. You know, often I'll split out my supplements and things. But I thought if I go through customs with this kind of strange white powder, I might get arrested. Don't want that to happen. So I always make sure that I've got it in my packet. Clearly marked that it is NMN that's giving me the energy and nothing else. And then this is the one that I take from Youth and Earth at night. It's the liposomal glutathione. And this is mango flavoured because glutathione is naturally quite sulphurous. So it's a sulphur based molecule that's what it contains um, so I take this at night particularly if I've had a glass of wine because it helps my body to process it um, and those are fine to take alongside your noggin so Fogo is definitely something that is on my list along with pause I think at night and oomph during the day check them out anyway go and have a look at the website see what you think and then last but not least I noticed that there have been a few questions and comments about quercetin Quercetin uh, is this amazing plant pigment that has saved my life with hay fever. I mean, literally. And I know lots of you are taking it. This is the one that I take. I took mine this morning before I went out into the park because the park is full of plane trees. And honestly, I could just feeling it really attacking my eyes and my throat. So this is the one. It's by Biocare, great British supplement company. Quercetin Complex. I buy loads of it from them um, and we've got 15% off, which is good. So that's Liz Loves over at Biocare, which is biocare.co.uk if you want to check out their quercetin. This is the one that I take. They say that the daily intake is three capsules. When I've got really bad hay fever or when the pollen count is really high and I'm affected by early tree pollen, like right now, I don't tend to get hay fever later in the year, I tend to get it more right now. I actually double that and I have checked with them and that's fine. So I take two capsules first thing, another two at lunchtime and another two in the evening. Um, and it's amazing how I don't have any symptoms. You know, it's, yeah, Nikki, it's just great, isn't it? Nikki's saying here, I take quercetin thanks to Liz, no hay fever at all yet. I mean, I was prepared not to believe it. I thought, come on, my hay fever's so bad, I normally have to have steroids and eye drops and nose sprays and all of that. Um, and no, this is what does it. And it's not just quercetin, they've also, it's quite a clever supplement because they put in vitamin C, which also supports uh, the activity, nettle leaf extract and bromelain, which is an enzyme from pineapple. And those things together with the quercetin, it's, I mean, I can't talk highly enough about it. They have not paid me to say this. This is not an ad. <laughs> but you can see it's a, it's a bright green capsule and that's the probably the nettle extract that's in there. Anyway, that is working for me. If it works for you, I would love to hear. And yeah, from Biocare. Yeah, it's, it's a remarkable thing. And actually talking about hay fever, just before I go, if you've got your beautiful new edition, then there is a great feature on page 35 all about hay fever and this was with a lovely allergy expert another lady doctor dr sophie farouk and i did a podcast with her so if you want to know more about allergies in general she's an allergy specialist so things like food intolerances fascinating information on what how to wean your baby so you know for those of you with youngsters or maybe grandchildren or wanting to know more generally about baby weaning to prevent allergies totally fascinating do take a listen to that um, and also talking about antihistamines and all of those things. She's got a great book actually called Understanding Allergy. I learned a lot during that podcast, including how to help somebody who's having an anaphylactic reaction. So potentially life-changing information in there, as is hopefully so much of what we talk about here at Lizelle Wellbeing. So before I go, just to say, if you're watching this in real time, it is Tuesday. So tomorrow, Wednesday, I have a new video going up on YouTube and it was something that I filmed last week at the amazing Bad Regaz Spa, Grand Resort Bad Regaz, 
in Switzerland and I did a little film with one of their top chefs and of course they do have three Michelin stars. Amazing for a spa. I mean it's quite remarkable that place. Um, so I did a little bit of filming while I was there to kind of keep some of the magic going. So that will be going up on YouTube tomorrow. So if you haven't yet subscribed to the Lizelle Wellbeing YouTube channel, do make sure that you are subscribed to that. And then I am heading off to a wellness conference. Yeah, there's an amazing organization called Harvest that do these incredible wellness, well-being events where they gather together lots of leading wellness experts from around the world for a few days. It's going to be held in Turkey, so I'm flying off to Bodrum tomorrow and I'm just packing my bags at the moment. And so that's where, hopefully, as long as the Wi-Fi is good and strong, and I've been told that it is, I will be coming to you live from Turkey on Thursday and we will be talking about gut health, really important, particularly as we travel, more on probiotics, more on travel and all of that. So really looking forward. I hope that you'll be able to join me. Um, and I'm hoping that I'll have a really beautiful background, a really lovely backdrop, maybe not quite as boring as my studios here, but something, um, yeah, something a bit more exciting. Ali, you need to listen to my podcast. Listen to my podcast on allergies with Dr. Sophie Farouk. Nikki, yeah, thank you. I think it'll be good. There's a couple of really interesting American medics who are going, and um, one of my ambitions is to go and chat to them and hopefully persuade them to come on my podcast. And uh, it's always easier when you've met somebody in real life to kind of chat to them and say, hey, come on, come and chat to my audience over here. Anyway, so that's what I'll be doing. And uh, yeah, I think it'll be quite hot, so I'm going to make sure I've got my sunscreen with me. Anyway, hope to see you on Thursday. Thank you for being with me today. Thank you to Rachel for manning Facebook and um, sending you lots of hearts back. Have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.